All right. This interview is part of the History Heard Project. The con content of this interview may be used for historical research. However, no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard or Dick Moresh. Today is July 27, 2009 at 3 o'clock p.m. This is an interview with Richard Morash in Anna Maria Island, Florida. He was born on June 14, 1933 in Boston, Massachusetts. So you started with the space program really early on. Um, how did you get into spacecraft technology? Well, when I went to college, I went to City College of New York, mm -hmm. uh, and I graduated from there in 1955. And about that time, they were really starting with uh, rockets pretty heavily because they, they had been used for weapons around the end of mm -hmm. World War II. And then they were starting to develop the rockets for space exploration. Uh, and it was a very interesting subject to me, so I decided that I would try to get into the rocket racket. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first job out of college was with a American Machine and Foundry Company in Connecticut, where we developed a rocket launching system, actually for a anti. Uh, missile type of a uh, rocket mm -hmm. and then after that I went into the Army because uh, uh, I had been in the Army uh, ROTC Reserve Officers Training Corps mm -hmm. and I had a commission as a lieutenant in the Army so I went in the Army uh, for a while at which time I was just doing uh, the Corps of Engineer type of work. Mm -hmm. And when I got out, uh, that was about the time when the Russians had launched the first Sputnik. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then that meant that the space race was on, on because <laughs> the United States decided that we should really be uh, foremost in, in space science. Mm -hmm. And we were interested in launching rockets for the purposes of, well, communication satellites mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and uh, for weather satellites. So that's what we did for several years. And I was working with uh, Hercules Powder Company, mm -hmm. uh, which their biggest uh, uh, product was uh, dynamite okay. Okay. so and we were using that type of technology in order to make rocket fuel mm -hmm. what we call solid propellant rockets so we would use the solid rockets and uh, use them in order to be able to launch some satellites and we developed rockets uh, out of fiberglass uh, mm -hmm. we, we made the first and most powerful fiberglass rockets that were ever built uh, glass is much stronger than steel, actually, uh, and when you, if you, if you uh, put it under tension, if you mm -hmm. treat it the right way. So when they developed fiberglass uh, into rocket cases, that meant we had a, a more lightweight rocket mm -hmm. uh, for the amount of fuel that we had to carry. They, they have what they call the, uh, the payload to dead load ratio. And uh, an easy way to explain that is how much does a package weigh uh, compared to the good stuff that you're carrying in it. Mm. Okay, and about the most efficient packaging that they really have is uh, an egg. Yeah. You know, a chicken, you wouldn't think a chicken would be that smart, but the shell of the egg is really very lightweight. <clears throat> and the stuff inside the egg, you know, is is very heavy. That's the payload. Mm -hmm. So that's a very nice, uh, good good way to have an analogy of, of what we wanted to do with the rockets. Mm -hmm. So after we developed uh, that type of a rocket, uh, we uh, 
at Hercules at Allegheny Ballistics Laboratory where I was, we, we were uh, starting to get into the lunar landing program, into the Apollo program. And uh, Hercules quoted on trying to build a rocket uh, to help go to the moon, but <clears throat> the, uh, uh, we didn't win that contract at that company. Mm -hmm. So one of the competitors for the, uh, for the rocket going to the moon was Grumman Aircraft. So then I went to work for Grumman because I really wanted to be on that project to go to the moon. Because yeah. uh, it was a very interesting and good program to be working on. So then I went to work for Grumman in Bethpage, Long Island. And I worked up there for the first year. And <clears throat> I was assigned to develop the rockets which were on what they call the descent stage, the part of the mm -hmm. rocket that actually goes down to the surface of the moon. And then <clears throat> after they're there, then they had to blast off from the moon and get back up to uh, lunar orbit in order to mate with the command and service module and get back to Earth. So I worked on both of those systems, the rockets that actually landed and then took off again from the moon. And that was the lunar module portion of the machine. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so what did you expect space travel to be like in 2009 when you first started? Where did you think we would be? <laughs> I thought we would be a lot further along than we are right now, actually, because this was, we just had the 40th anniversary mm -hmm. of the first landing of the moon, July the 16th, uh, when we actually, well, July the 20th is when we landed. The launch was on the 16th of July, so it took four mm -hmm. days to get there. Uh, another four days to get back. Anyway, it was a pretty long mission, and uh, but I thought that that uh, that first step would mean that we would eventually be setting up bases on the moon to do mm -hmm. lunar explorations and using the moon actually as a launch pad to go to the other planets. And I expected that by 2009, by now. Mm -hmm that we would have people walking around on Mars. Yeah. But we don't. We, we do have some nice little lunar mm -hmm. uh, or Mars explorers walking around and taking pictures, but that's not like a man. Yeah. So. Um, what was it like to work on the Ant Antares project? Is that what it's called? Antares. Antares. <laughs> mm -hmm. And early rocket synthesis. Yeah, the Antares uh, was the <coughs> was one of the fiberglass rockets that I was describing yeah. and it was made out of a solid propellant mm -hmm. uh, essentially like uh, nitroglycerin yeah. combined with uh, nitrocellulose put together so it's like a big stick of dynamite but it's <laughs> very much more controlled it doesn't explode mm -hmm. it burns okay it's a controlled uh, Burn, <coughs> excuse me, it's the controlled burning uh, type of a thing which allows the rocket to uh, go as far, have as much thrust as you wanted to for as much time as you wanted to. So working on that was a very challenging type of a thing because we had to develop all kinds of technology. Uh, the, the temperatures on the insides of these rockets get up close to 5,000 degrees oh Fahrenheit. Gosh. And of course, it's just sitting on the inside of a little fiberglass skin. So you have to be very careful and develop some very nice insulation. Uh, <clears throat> you had to have things that could take that kind of temperature and the, and the pressure and the thrust that were going to be needed in order to put stuff into orbit. And that particular Antares rocket and uh, a similar one, but about a quarter of the size of it, the Altair, mm -hmm. uh, were the third and fourth stages of the uh, Scout rockets that we had back in the early 60s. And uh, they were used to put communication satellites into orbit and weather satellites. and. Uh, it was very thrilling to work on that type of program. Yeah. 